Cliff, how did you how did you find Christ in a way where you're like, I'm going to go and debate this with people? Because I know you're debating it because you want to challenge their hearts. Because I feel like a man can only know who God is when he asks the right questions or like tries to hear it from a point of view that he wants to hear it from. If that makes any sense. Sure it does. In middle school and in high school, and then in really intensely in college, people challenged my belief in Christ. And because I do not want to believe in Jesus just because I've been hoodwinked or brainwashed into believing him, but I want to believe in him because he's reliable, I had to do a lot of skeptical questioning, a lot of thinking, and a lot of studying. And I am not a natural student. I am not an intellectual. I would prefer to play tennis or basketball or just hang out. But because I was asked so many hard questions, that challenged me to think through, why do I believe in Christ? What's the evidence that God exists? What's the evidence that Jesus is reliable? What's the evidence that there's life after death? What's the evidence you can trust a 2,000-year-old book called the Bible to give you any type of truth? And so that forced me, against my will, <laughs> to study and to find evidence to support this faith. And that was a very healthy exercise. And the more I studied, the more I found that indeed Jesus Christ is the truth. No, I can't prove Christ, but I can't prove anything in life. To prove means to show that it cannot be another way. I can't prove to you that I'm not just a bad dream you guys are having right now. Maybe I'm a bad dream you're having right now. But the overwhelming evidence is, no, I'm sitting here and you're sitting there, and that's why we behave and treat each other the way we do, because the evidence is we're really here having this conversation. So I can't prove that God exists, but the overwhelming evidence of order and design pointing to a designer, of this innate drive for meaning in life, of love. Love demands there be more to reality than simple matter and energy, simply biochemical reactions. There's got to be some type of spiritual being who creates us with this innate ability to love. So when you begin to think and observe reality, when you observe your experience of life, Indeed, you begin to understand God is real. Jesus Christ is the truth. When you study the, the evidence for the historical resurrection, Christ really died. He just didn't lapse into unconsciousness. A Roman soldier took a spear jammed into his side, and we read in the Gospel of John that an issue of watery serum separate from red hard clotted blood flowed from his side. They didn't understand that medically in the first century. We know very well. George, please don't stick yourself in the side and have clotted blood flow separated from a watery serum flowing out because it means heart failure. You're dead. So he really died. And they buried him in a very well-known tomb, the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. And three days later, he rose from the dead. And over a period of 40 days, he appeared to over 500 people. Well, when you begin to realize that when you're sitting at grandma and grandpa's funeral, at mom and dad's funeral, that either this is the end, because there is no God, and if there is no God, obviously there's no life after death, or this is the possible beginning of eternal life in heaven, all of a sudden, you got a passion inside to say, what's more important than that? There isn't anything else more important, if you love people. And so that's what fueled me, George, to go out and start standing up on college campuses and challenging people to consider Christ.